Hey you guys, this is Real Talk, uh, and I'm coming to you with a new episode, and on this episode, I want to discuss the tie between uh, the Mafia and the Illuminati, because uh, I was always wondering what the ties were, um, and I think, uh, I don't know, I got my little two cents. So this is basically my two cent video. <laughs> I didn't do extensive research because I'm not trying to work that hard. You know. I'm just not trying to work that hard. But anyway, uh, let's just take a look at a few photos and I'll give my commentary as we go, okay? So the 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 one we're gonna talk about is this. Goodfellas. Goodfellas is like a a hardcore mafia movie and it came out in 1990 and it starred Ray Liotta um, Robert De Niro and Joe Pesci and Paul Sorvino those are the three you know four main guys in the movie and if you notice from this just this uh, logo here it's Goodfellas and it's in red and that's significant because it seems like the whole movie it's just drenched in red, and I'm thinking that it's in red for many various reasons. You know, it could be blood red, as in blood money, and it also can be satanic red, as in satanic rituals. Because uh, there's a lot of nefarious things going on with these dudes, because they're just involved. The lifestyle is just so heinous, and the crimes are just so bad, it's just like... It's horrible, you know. But there's actual, there's actually people, there's people out there that actually live this type of lifestyle. Um, here we see Ray Liotta, and as you can see, you know they chose the the color red. Um, it just, it just throughout the whole movie, we we see this same, the same, you know, because. <laughs> We see the same uh, the same scenes all, all the way through the movie. Scorsese and and all the directors uh, are all in the Illuminati, and you know they're Illuminati directors, of course. And just you know, as we see the, the, the as we see all the stuff that they're doing in, in the movies, it's just it's not good. But here we see uh, Ray Ray Liotta, which is the main character, and is, he's he's in red face. This is after. Uh, this scene is where, at the beginning of the movie, where they're driving and they and the trunk starts moving around, and then they find out that that guy they have in the trunk is actually still alive, and Billy Bats. Here's here's Paul Sorvino's character, and uh, he um, he's like the hardcore main main dude of of the whole crime family, and. I was watching the real uh, Henry Hill, and he told me that Paul Sorvino didn't come, come nowhere near as vicious as the real guy was. The real guy was just like, they, ha they had to calm the parts down for the movie. Scorsese said um, that he didn't want to see the real guy, because <laughs> they, 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 they were that scary in real life. That I mean, those dudes were like, they were devils, basically. You know that's that's how killers that's how bad bad killers they were because they had devils in them. I mean, for you know, because they went around just murdering people for fun. You know, that's the type of that's the type of guys these guys are. Because you know, I actually checked out the real Henry Hill, which passed away in I think uh, I think it was two thousand five or two thousand six somewhere around there. No, he, no, he passed away in two thousand twelve. He just barely passed away a couple of years ago, like like three or four years ago. So, and this picture is significant because at the beginning of the movie, we see Henry Hill, you know, it's the young Henry Hill, and he's running around, and he, and he meets those Paul Sorino guys, and, you know, the taxi cab across the, the street from his house. And as you can see, the, the evil smile, you know, I've spoken about this, whether they're evil, this is their, this is their attorney signaling to the judge, hey, he's one of ours. You know, look at the look at the smile and then the evil look that he has in his eye, and then the judge kind of, you know, the judge, the judge accepts it, and then he says, "Continue, counselor." 
so basically he's telling them, hey, we got this guy, he's, he's one of ours, so, you know, we're just gonna run him through the, we're just gonna run him through the system, you know, through the, through the action that we're just gonna, for the sake of the people, because, you know, we're counting the people, we're, we're, um, we're putting an act on for the people, but he's one of ours. We're just going to kind of smack him on the wrist, take some of his money, and then and then cut him loose. Because that's what we do, you know. And for all we know, this guy right here is going to be related to some dude in the mafia. He might be a cousin or an uncle or or somewhere along the line he's related to these ma these mafia guys. And the reason I say that is because of this movie here. Uh, in 72, we, we this when it first came out, the Godfather came out, and from from look just looking at this, I can see where everything's where everything's related. The Godfather is a 1972 American crime film directed by Francis Ford Coppola. Okay, Coppola is connected to George Lucas, or you know Lucifer, because Lucas could be Lucifer. Lucas is connected to Disney because he sold the the Star Wars franchise to Disney now. At first, he hated he hated the corporation, blah blah blah. He was trying to stand for his thing, but they ultimately sucked him in. Uh, Steven Spielberg is also connected to Coppola because they all they all went to the same uh, uh, movie academy down there. Uh, what's what's the film the uh, thing in L.A. And um, ultimately, they didn't want to let Lucas in. He did the THX one eighty seven or something or one seventy eight or something like that. That was his movie for graduating from the film school over there and got him some awards, but he didn't want to play ball with uh, Fox. 20th Century Fox didn't want to release it, so he did it on his own. And it didn't really turn out all that great because it was a movie. So then, after they rejected him, he went down to, to uh, Modesto, which is where he's from. And then in Modesto, California, that's, that's, that's where we get uh, uh, American Graffiti. And then he blew up after that, and that's when all the Star Wars stuff came. So Coppola is is attached to Coppola is attached to Lucas and and um, Spielberg. But Nicholas Cage is actually Nicholas Coppola, and you can see those credits on the Fast Time at Ridgemont High. He's like a nephew or something. So they're all connected, and it, this one starred uh, Marlon Brando and Al Pacino. Al Pacino, we we know that is in playing the devil's advocate. So he's playing; he's actually playing the devil. But going back to this, and these three movies, because the first one came out in '72, the second one came out, uh, part two came out in '74, and then the third part came out in 1990, the same year that Goodfellas came out. In this trio of movies, we see how the Mafia boss comes... Oh, and they did it on Paramount Pictures, which was uh, tied to I Love Lucy. Paramount Pictures wound up... Uh, Desilu Studios ran all the way from the 50s, and they ran it all the way up till about 68 or 69, possibly even even in the 70s, in the late, late 60s, uh, early 70s, and then they sold it to Paramount. It turned into Paramount. So... Uh, Everything, like I say, everything is connected with everything else because you know that's how these people get down. You know, they're all part of the same uh, same scheme. You know, the same um, family, so to speak. But inside of these movies of the Godfather movies, it's um, it pretty much tells us that that at the beginning, uh, the Italian, uh, the main guy, which is going to be Marlon Brando, comes from Italy. He comes from Italy, Italy, and then he shows up in America, and then he starts with all his mafia stuff, and I think it says here it, it started in the 45, so that would have been right after the war, you know, the Second World War. So when he came over, he started in New York, and, it, and he landed in New York. So then he started all, all, all his mob stuff. It says, um, it stars Marlon Brando and Al Pacino as the leaders of a fictional New York crime family. And that actual crime fam family, I think it was going to be the Gambino crew. It was based off of a real crime family. The real crime family, the main one out, out of New York. <clears throat> but in these three um, pictures, it pretty much tells us that... Um, the first one was was when uh, was when uh, uh, 
Brando was in charge, and then he gets older by the second one, and I think he dies in the second one, and he passes the torch on to Al Pacino. And, but by that time, they already had power and money, and they were already sending their kids to, to law school, which ultimately they, they, they graduated into law school and started becoming lawyers and politicians and judges. By the third one, um, uh, <clears throat> Pacino was already old. And, you know, and he was already tied to the Vatican. I think it even has some scenes where, where they're talking to the Vatican priests, you know, and basically, because I always wondered why, what the tie was, uh, Mafia to the Vatican. Well, duh, it's in Rome, hello. You know, everybody coming from, from Sicily, and it's in it's in Italy, Rome, Rome Italy. Duh, stupid. So, that's the tie-in right there. So, in these three movies, it teaches us and it tells us how, because they tell us what, what they're doing in the movies. So, these three movies tells us that the, the corruption we're facing is all mafia, because it's all mafia people and they're all related to everybody else. Now, here's the famous uh, scene where, you know, I'm here to amuse you, I'm here to amuse you. <laughs> where Ray Liotta tells him that he's funny and then he scares the living daylights out of him. And you see that guy with the hands crossed over there on the side of him? That's the dude that uh, is trying to collect from uh, from Tommy. And he's a, just a vicious one. He's, he plays a vicious guy in this movie. And here we see he cracks him over the head with a bottle. And they're all laughing because he tried to collect the bill. And he called him a deadbeat. And he cracked the bottle over his head. And here's the guy is just like astounded. And he just he's just a vicious dude. And, 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 and notice again how, how the, the setting is red. I mean, they, they use a lot of red in this movie. So it's like a subtle thing. And, you know, the, the nightlife, you know, when you go into these bars, it's all red. And it's, there's, there's, certain, there's certain reasons why they have the lighting the way they do. That's why I really don't go in there. And I don't really like performing in there no more. You know, especially now that I'm ca kind of catching on and I'm, I'm definitely awake. Um... And here we see Jimmy strangling the crap out of the dude. <laughs> here he's strangling the crap out of the dude <laughs> with the with the with the hair pieces, <laughs> and uh, Ray Liotta's laughing because <laughs> he's strangling them. <laughs> uh, Maury, I think, is his, his character's name. And I mean, I'm only going to uh, put a couple of pictures because I don't want to go through the whole movie because we've all seen this movie. But here he is uh, strangling Maury because <laughs> he owes him some money. And then Maury gets a phone call, and it's for and it's for uh, Henry because the his girl was getting messed with by the dude that lives across the street. Well, uh, the dude across the street made a mistake because this is what happens. In the next scenes, we see that he picks up his girl and he just beats the living daylights out of the dude. And the two dudes in the back, if they look at the dude in the blue, he's like, "Oh my gosh, <laughs> what are you doing?" <laughs> These two dudes in the back cannot believe that this guy is pistol whipping their friend, like, viciously. Ray, Li Ray Liotta just goes on, a like, a nasty rampage. <laughs> and at, before I was, like, I was completely saved, and I knew this was one of my favorite parts of the movie. Before I was, like, awake. Because, I mean, he just brutally beats him down, like, teaches him his lesson, like, yeah. <laughs> but now that I see this, is just straight evil. You know, and there, there again, a red car. You know, I mean, they're using a lot of red in this in this film, and the dude in the blue is just he can't believe like what a vicious beating his friend is taking from the other guy. But he taught him a lesson to never touch Karen again because he'll kill him. And then the guy in the back says, "Don't shoot," because <laughs> he pointed the gun and "Don't shoot." And needless to say, these dudes were terrified. And, and Ray Liotta, they, they said that the character of Ray Liotta, which was Henry Hill, um, Paul Sorvino's character, Joe Pesci's character, and uh, Jimmy Conway, which was Robert Duran, they were all watered down, that these dudes were like ten times more more scary than they are in this flick. So that just goes to show you how how, how evil everything is. And this is one, I took this picture because um, uh, I wanted to make a commentary on this one. Check this out, okay. 
after the guy cracks uh, that dude in the, after Joe Pesci character cracks that guy in the head, he goes to Pauly and he asks him, hey man, you know, uh, 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 Tommy is, you know, is vicious, you know, be my partner. And the guy says, okay, well, you know, try to convince him to be partners with the restaurant. This is the restaurant that he had, but, but they, they borrowed everything from the bank, you know, and they pretty much bankrupt the business because they were, they were just, they just caved everything in because, I mean, what do they care? They're, they're thieves. They're thieves. <laughs> they, uh, that's what they do for a living. They steal for a living. So, and then, and then the, the commentary of Ray Liotta is like, uh, once you borrowed everything from the bank and there's no more, you know, there's no more, there's nothing else, you, you, you light a torch, you burn it. And this is them setting up the thing so they can burn it. Now, the funny thing is this, is they burn it for the insurance of, of the place. So they can get paid from the insurance. But here's the funny thing. There's one thing I noticed. <laughs> the bankers are committing fraud on, on the entire planet. You know, but they can commit fraud and get away with it and nobody does nothing to them. But you, you see these two dudes, they're committing fraud by burning the place and, you know, and trying to get away with it. And they may get away with it, you know, because there's a lot of fraud, there's a lot of arson and there's a lot of that stuff going on. But if they catch them, they'll, they'll get like serious, serious time in jail. So isn't that something how, how it's, it's slanted, you know, only one way. They can do it, but we can't. Now, I, I'm not I'm not a big fraud person anyway. I wouldn't do fraud anyway because, you know, thou shalt not bear false witness and steal, covet, you know. But I'm just making that that connection, how the Illuminati can commit fraud and there's no there's no punishment. But anybody out of the, out, anybody away from that 1% and you got some serious punishment coming. <laughs> That's something. Okay. This is when uh, Henry takes Karen to the, you know, he's he's whining and dining her when, when they first meet, blah, blah, blah. And they go, and Bobby Benton sends them a thing of wine. So, and the real Henry Hill says, yeah, man, you know, I used to have Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, Sammy Davis Jr. They were all, like, flying into New York. And they were, he was, he was rubbing elbows with all those dudes, you know. So, uh, this goes to show you how, uh, it was all connected back then. So see, now the mafia is connected to the, to the entertainment, you know, uh, the, the entertainers were, were, were working closely with these guys. The mafia basically is, uh, that's the enforcer of the Illuminati, but for the underworld, not necessarily. See, the police are the enforcers for the regular, regular people. You know, people that are not involved in crime and are churchgoers and, and the like. The mafia is, is the enforcers for the evil people. So they have to, <laughs> even their enforcers are, they got, they got two sets of enforcers. And a buddy of mine um, was telling me exactly what was going on because this would have been, I think this was going to be like 62, 64. Well, here's my buddy. Uh, that was playing with Elvis, you know, and here we see him, uh, that is this the guy that Elvis, Elvis that has his hand, uh, around his, uh, arm, and I'm not even supposed to be using this picture, I hope he doesn't get mad, because this is an unreleased picture, uh, this picture might be worth a great deal, so, if you guys are watching this thing, you might, you know, get a copy of it, but yeah, that, that's an authentic picture of Elvis, and, I'm looking at Elvis there, and he's real skinny, man. So it must have been when he. It must have been way before he got fat and died, because we, as we see, I think he died when '74 or some some around there, '75. That was when he was bloated and all that. My buddy tells me, uh, and my buddy's in Las Vegas, and you know, I've talked with him, and he would tell me, "Yeah, man, Elvis was cool. Um, he was a good dude. He would give us rings. He would give us a bunch of stuff, you know, like like bonuses." So he'd be gigging with Elvis, and as we all know who Elvis is, I mean, he's <laughs> he was the one that broke broke everything open, you know. And uh, coincidentally, uh, Elvis was what well, Elvis was uh, was demon possessed. You know, that's what all the gyrating hips and all that stuff came from. It turns out, I mean, there's a lot of documentaries where we see Elvis is possessed. 
And the reason I, I put this in is because um, my buddy was would tell me that back in those days, the mafia was heavily running um, uh, Las Vegas. You know, they they had a strong strong hand in, in Las Vegas because I think in the second movie of uh, Godfather they send the guy out to Las Vegas and that's when Las Vegas was barely being born that was that, that was right around uh, I forget who the main dude was that they send out there it's not Lucky Luciano it's the other guy uh, there was this one uh, I forget the dude that started Las Vegas he, he went out there and he had a contract to, to, to build all the buildings and then he couldn't make it and they went they wound up killing him Bugsy, uh, Bugsy, I forget what his name is, anyway, so my buddy's telling me all the way the corporate, because see, the corporations took over Las Vegas in the, in the around the 80s, and we see that in, in the movie Casino, how it used to be the mafia controlled, mafia was running Vegas solely, and Vegas is basically the money laundering for the Illuminati. That's why that city's there. That's why it's called Sin City, because you can just do all the debauchery you want and then leave. But what that really is, is, is there to launder the money. Because gambling, you know, how can you tell who's doing what? But that's actually the money laundering of the Illuminati. But my buddy would tell me, you know, uh, Elvis would give him rings, he would give him bracelets, he would just, you know, give him a bunch of stuff here, man, uh, uh, take this man I'm gonna give you know you did a great job tonight and he would give him stuff and he would talk with him like regular hey hey you know what's up hey well come here and he would hang out well you see he's kind of puts his arm around him like hey you know they were hanging out and stuff but uh <clears throat> yeah this is um that was back when when uh, um the mafia was running Las Vegas and was heavily uh influencing the entertainment industry now we see in this episode, in this scene where they're killing the Billy Bats character, that was a dude that was in the trunk. That was moving around in the trunk, and then ultimately they, uh, and, they and then we get, and there again, okay, in this bar where this scene happens, it turns out in the real story of Henry Hill, he was actually, he actually tried to leave the mafia, but he couldn't get out. He had bought this bar thinking that, that he was trying to go legit. And, and uh, that, that was weird because in the movie it doesn't mention anything about him leaving. It just it just a, it's a, just a constant uh, storyline. But the real story of Henry Hill, because Henry Hill actually said himself he was trying to leave and he just couldn't get out. What when this when this thing happened? Cause here they're, they're killing Billy Bats. Uh, they said that it was over a beef. Like go get your shine bottle. It was like a disrespect, but it wasn't a disrespect. Here he's still alive in the trunk, and they're still sta and then here goes Tommy stabbing him, and then they shoot him. He says he never got shot; they just stabbed him like sixty times. But for the movie's sake, they don't want to show Tommy stabbing him sixty times. He stabbed him a few times, and then they shot him because it was just it was just easier, you know, for the movie's sake. But in reality, they killed a made man. Tommy had killed a made man, and you can't do that. That's against the the mafia had the Ten Commandments of the mafia. And you can't just kill um, the crime bosses. You know, you had to have a sit down, and you had to have a, a real beef. And they they even got rules that you can't break, called the the Ten Commandments of the Mafia. So after this after this crime, Henry Hill was forever locked in because now he was he was a, an accessory to this murder, and you know. We all know what happens throughout the movie where he gets into all the dope and all that junk. But but again, notice all the red. Look 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 at all the red. Look at all the, the, the demonic uh, influences and, and blood money and, and it's a lot of blood, a lot of gore. You know, um, <laughs> and it seems like every there's like just uh, there's Karen pulling a gun on Henry when he's in his bed, so he wakes up to a barrel of a gun. <laughs> and needless to say he kicks her behind and you know but she's all pissed off because she's cheating on, on she finds out that she's cheating with the other chick uh, and you know he, you know, yeah, he gets out of it but he's real careful because he doesn't want to get shot I mean you, you're you asleep and you <laughs> wake up into the barrel of a gun like in your face that would not be a nice uh, thing to see I'll be honest with you 
but notice how much how much crime and how much uh how much um evil stuff is going on in this flick i mean look look at the evil that that we're exposed to because a lot of people are asleep and to them this is like wow that's exciting no it's it's pretty demonic is what it is um here's the mafia ritual okay to become a full member of the mafia or cosa nostra to to become a man of honor because they they have that talk the illuminati talks about honor and dishonor an aspiring member ha has to pass mafia initiation ritual so where have we heard that from uh i don't know secret societies uh masons the ceremony involves significant ritual oaths blood secret society blood sacrifices you know all that junk and an agreement is made to the following to follow the rules of the mafia and pre and present it to the inductee so that's the dude coming in the first known account of the ceremony dates back to 1877 in sicily okay so we can see where the illuminati which is part of the vatican you know vatican is is I thought Vatican was higher than they are, but according to, I'll show you something right now, I don't think so. The Vatican is from Rome, and Sicily's in Rome, so, you know, it's, it's, it's the Roman Empire, you know. The typical sequence of the ceremony, according to several dis, uh, distinct descriptions, has common features. First, the new recruit is led into the presence of other members and presented by a member. So, isn't this where the Illuminati comes for you? They they ask you to join. You can't ask them to join. How many times have we heard that? You know, you know, a lot of the black child videos say that. Okay, the association is explained. The association, the association is explained, including the basic rules. Then his finger is pricked with a needle by the officiating member. A few drops of blood are spilled on a card bearing the likeness of a saint. See, so they're tying in blood with the spiritual world. You see, the card is set on fire. Finally, while the card is passed rapidly from hand to hand to avoid burns, the novice takes an oath of loyalty to the mafia family. Okay, uh, Henry Hill says that the card. Well, it was another guy. It was another crime dude that says that if you ever break the oath, that you will you will uh, burn in hell. Just like the saint is burning, you know, on the card. See, so they acknowledge hell. So therefore, they know that it's 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 a lot of demonic stuff that they're doing. He heaven and hell, Jesus and the devil. See, so <laughs> this is basically the the secret society ritual, but but for the for the mafiosos, it's a slightly different, but but it still it still involves blood, a blood contract. It still involves rituals. And it still involves taking oaths, with all of which are against the laws of God. See, and let's take out the let's take a look at the Illuminati chart. Okay, um, first we got the bankers, you know, the IMF and World Bank, and you know, they didn't include it, but you you might as well put the Federal Reserve in there because you know we all know that's the ones that you know that are messing everything up for us then they got secret societies they got freemasons skull and bones we got the lodges that's templar the you know rosicrucians priory de, uh, de scion royal order of the garter so we got the secret society so and they're higher so they're really close to to lucifer they're, they're high up on the totem pole and we got the political groups bilderbergers trilateral commission Club of Rome, Bohemian Grove, we've all heard of those, NATO and all that junk, you know, that's basically Washington, all the Washington crowd, and then check this out, in the intelligence group, we got CIA, KG, KGB, FBI, and look where mafias, mafia and the drug cartels and Interpol are all, all in there with the intelligence agency, <laughs> so the mafia so they have the CIA, KGB, FBI, British intelligence for the regular people, and then they have the mafia and the Interpol too. But mafia, drug cartels, Communist Party for the for the evil ones. You see how they have them both on the intelligence group. So that's their their enforcers, the cops, and the mafia. And it even says in uh, um, 
It even says inside of the movie. Uh, that's what the, that's what the, the the FBI can't understand that 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 what the what the organization does is give protection to people that can't go to the cops. They're they're like a police force for wise guys. See, they tell you in the movie that that's what they are. They're the cops for the the criminals, the enforcers. If you get out of line, they kill you. You know, drug cartels. You know, look, look how vicious that industry is. Guns and just. <laughs> carnage that goes on there look at uh, Scarface that's another Scorsese uh, film then they got the religious groups New, New Age cults see New Age Vatican phony baloney uh, supposedly Jesus liberal Protestant domination uh, can anyone say Amish hmm? you know because of the Ordnung and all that stuff I think they're Protestants actually they're anti-Baptist so maybe that's not that's not true so I better in that comment uh, Parliament of Religions so see these are the phony baloney religions dominated by the Illuminati but but they want to people love to put all religions together and then throw them throw them away and they're, they're all bad no they're not all bad you know but I definitely wouldn't wouldn't uh, follow the Vatican for sure Unitarian you know Universalist Church Temple of Understanding. I don't know what those are. Unity Church. Education groups. Okay, we got World Peace. Lucis Trust, which is Lucifer Trust. You know, that's the same one from uh, Anne Rand. Uh, you know, the, yeah. That's a publishing company. Media Establishment. Okay, so what does that mean? Media. That means uh, Fox News, CNN, all, all, the, all of the media and the entertainment. You know, they're controlling the entertainment, too. Because that's media, too. And media is part of the entertainment. All being controlled by Lucifer, which is the Illuminati, which was the, those uh, one percenters. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, these dudes are just straight rotten, man. I mean, wow. And they even have their own blood rituals and sacrifices and whatnot. now obviously they're not going to tell us that in, in the pictures because all that stuff is hid but after watching the, the documentary on Henry Hill okay at the end of this movie he winds up snitching out Paul uh, Jimmy Conway and uh, the Paul Serino character Paulie whatever his name is and they wind up going to prison and he's in the witness protection program well guess what as soon as those dudes went to prison for the next 25 years, there was a hit on Henry Hill for over a million dollars. Or it was either half a million or a million. They were trying to kill that dude because he was just ratting out. He ratted out 50 guys in the crime families of New York. So they really had it in for him. And he just was running and running and running and running. So he couldn't he couldn't rest. See, those demons were on him for him turning and helping the police you know, uh, prosecute the other guys. Now, one good thing is this. Now, now, I do have a ray of hope, okay? God is there to protect us, and he's still prevalent, and he's still, he's still his presence is still here. You know, so I'm not going to throw a, a big giant boulder at, the, you know, the, the FBI and the CIA. and Okay. We've all heard stories how they're just corrupted beyond belief. And we don't like it, of course. However, going back to what I've been saying in all my videos, I'm telling you, those Ten Commandments work. Um, something curious happened to me today. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to share a few things. <laughs> Since I've been uploading these videos and, I, and I've been, uh, you know, steadily proclaiming Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and Almighty God as truth and as number one man i'm giving satan black eyes left and right as soon as i woke up this morning i had to go run some errands okay so i go to find some documents that i needed specifically a money order it was an uncashed money order i mean i was going to buy some services but it turns out the service kind of backed out and they were not going to accept any more payments or any more orders so i just had like an empty money order well i look high and low and it's missing after I give up, because I figured someone had taken it, 
I give up, and then some told me, look at the ground, and I looked in the ground, and it was sitting right there on the ground, so I find it. So then I say, okay, well, now i got to go run the errand. So I go run the errand, and as I'm backing out of my out of my driveway, there's a bunch of glass there. I'm like, wow. So now i got to clear all the glass because I don't want to get any flat tires, needless to say. So that took a minute. Then I run down to the thing. I, I, get the, I get the money order, cash back out, get it, and then I have to go to the grocery store because I was running low on groceries, and I get there. I get there. And uh, I'm conducting my business, and the next thing I know, I go to check for for the money that I just cashed for the money order, and it's missing. I'm like, oh, here we go. So I go walking around trying to look for it, look for it, look for it. Thank God that the guy that works at the grocery store found it and returned it back to me. Everything was there because he saw I was frantic. I'm like, man, I said, you know, this is my car payment, man. I gotta. And then he kind of felt guilty, and he gave it to me, and then I gave him twenty bucks. Then I, get, <laughs> then I get home and then go to another store because the the first store didn't have what I was looking for. I went to a second one, and as I'm trying to leave the, as I'm trying to leave the store, the the electronic thing won't let the electronic wheels get out of the store, so I get stuck. So then the manager dude come, oh well, you know, it won't let you because of such and such. I can just help you carry this to your car. I'm like, okay. Then I get home. <laughs> Then I get home and uh, my sister had borrowed borrowed my extension cord and she has one of the electronic mowers and they, she was mowing the grass earlier and then I, and then she had left the mower there and my my extension cord was attached so I just went to go unplug it and the cord got stuck <laughs> the cord got stuck so I had to pry it loose and it kind of ruined my cord which I'm kind of bummed over and I got to replace. But what I'm getting at is just all this morning, I just had nothing but issues and more issues and more issues and more issues. And what that represents is this. See, Satan can attack me direct, but he can definitely uh, sabotage. So uh, this is just, a, a, this is just a, a tip for the people that actually do listen to this video. Um... Be, be weary of Satan's sabotages and, and try to be as detail oriented as possible. Because the glass in, in front of the uh, front of the driveway, if I wasn't paying attention, I would have got a bunch of flat tires and it would have been my fault. Because he does stuff like that. He'll throw he'll throw he'll he'll have like 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 uh uh nails and, and glass and stuff around your car and you don't notice and then you just back out like normal because you're not paying attention. And next thing you know, boom! Now, now you have a flat. Now, now there's an expanse. Now you have the hassle of having a flat tire, and then you got to fix it, and then it's just a big hassle. Same with with open container uh, soft drinks or, or milk or water or whatever, and it's in an open container. That's why I like having bottles with caps. That way, you know, you can cap it and set it anywhere, and it, it, if it falls, it won't spill and, and ruin your electronics or blow stuff up. Satan is a punk, man. He will set you up, and then it's and then if you're not paying attention, you know that's what happened to a hard drive of mine. That's why now I put all hard drives on the floor. It was on the table, and you know, and it's almost as if it was done on purpose because it was on a table which was about maybe two or three feet off the ground. I was working with it, and and all of a sudden, boom, and it, fa it falls on the ground. Well, needless to say, the fall is not good, especially for hard drive, and I wind up losing it. It wind up destroying the hard drive. So that taught me a lesson. Now I put the hard drives on the floor and just run the cable from the floor. Because if it's on the floor, it can't fall any farther because it's running on the floor. <laughs> anyway, um, this is just my two cents of, of how uh, the mafia is tied into the Illuminati. Because I always wondered why they were so close. Uh, because, you know, the, the, they always seem so, you know, the, the priest and, you know, the Catholic Church and so it's all it's all rotten all the way through. You know, you see the Vatican is tied over there. That but and, and the Vatican is not even as high as the Freemasons. See, the Freemasons are higher than the Vatican. They're 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 like really close to the top to the one percenters. So they, it turns out that they have their own blood rituals and they're the 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 enforcers for the criminals. They're the cops for the criminals. There's cops for us, for the regular people, and then there's cops for the underworld, and that's the mafia. Anyway, um, just wanted to uh, uh, post this video and uh, just go over a few things. Uh, and thank you guys for hanging out and checking out my videos. It's pretty cool. 
I've been I've been watching my numbers and stuff, and yeah. uh, I'm glad that I'm uh, able to provide some some uh, information. Now I don't really dig in as serious as I can because you know honestly, if it's a really important issue, I will. But right now I'm not really. This stuff is kind of trivial, and it's not it's stuff that you've heard already on other videos. So I'm just kind of repeating certain stuff. It's just my little angle on it. But anyway, this is Real Talk. This is going to end this video, and I'm going to catch up with you guys next time.